well uh, in this video lecture uh, we are going to discuss uh, ANOVA table and missing values in ANOVA table what ANOVA stands for ANOVA stands for analysis of variance a it has many implications such as ANOVA can be used to uh, test the quality of several population means it can be used in regression analysis to test whether the overall model is statistically significant or not and some other uses this video basically covers how can we find out missing values in an ANOVA table when we are doing regression analysis. So look at the ANOVA table. This is the um, this is the ANOVA table, and you can see there are some missing values. For example, question mark one, question mark two, question mark three, four, five, and six. So there are six missing values, and these are the regression results because you can see sources of variation in y one source is x the other source is e so how can we find out these missing values first of all we have to look into the question and then we will come back to the uh, computation of missing values so this is the question look at it example is the marks of 42 students were regressed on their study hours and the ANOVA table is given below so it means that sample size is equal to 42 students and the dependent variable is marks and the independent variable is study hours. So it means that this is a simple linear regression. This is confirmed. Okay. What are the questions? The questions are find the missing values. These question marks must be found. And test for alpha is equal to 5% to test whether the overall model is significant or not. So it means that you have to apply a NOVA test after finding out these missing values to test whether entered shift and the slope is statistically significant or not. And the third part is determine the value of R square coefficient of determination from this table and interpret it. And we will interpret that. So this this example has three components, and let's see how can we uh, deal with it. The first part consists of the uh, computation of the missing values. So to compute these missing values, it is mandatory to understand the structure of ANOVA table. To understand the structure of ANOVA table, let us discuss a general ANOVA table. So this is a general ANOVA table. As we know that dependent variable is Y which is mars of the students, right? This is your dependent variable. And mars of the student variate due, due to two sources. One is study hours. If student increases their study hours, it, have, it will have a positive impact on their study, uh, sorry, on their marks, right? And the other source of variation in mars is error. Error is a mixture of so many factors. For example, there can be errors in data collection, data processing, the functional form can be wrong and many more. Okay, the f look into the second column. The second column consists of degree of freedom. So degree of freedom for independent variable. In our case, independent variable is one because this is simple regression. In case of multiple regression, you may have more than one regressors. So the degree of freedom for uh, independent variable is normally this is equal to k minus one so it must be noted the second thing error degree of freedom this is always equal to sample size minus the number of parameter estimates and total degree of freedom is always equal to the sum of these two if we add them up this is equal to n less one so it must be noted then we need the sum of square column how can we fill the sum of square column x sum of square this is regression sum of square this is always equal to explained variation summation small y hat square and error sum of square this is always equal to unexplained variation which is equal to summation e square and the sum of these two is equal to total sum of square which is equal to summation y square all right then we need mean sum of mean square error 
we need the variance of regression and the variance of the residual error so if we divide the sum of square by the respective degree of freedom we get mean square error or we can call it estimate of variances so this is equal to we should divide explain variation by its own degree of freedom which is equal to k minus 1 and similarly we can divide the error sum of square the unexplained variation by its own degree of freedom which is equal to n minus n minus k so this is the mean square error for error and th this is the mean square error for regression and finally we need if calculated value if we divide the mean square error of regression by the mean square error of the residual we get a calculated value and this is equal to summation small y hat square divided by k minus 1 and divided by summation e square divided by n minus k so this is how can we find out the missing values before further discussion you guys are requested to like this video subscribe to show academy and press the bell icon to get regular updates of this channel so we will use this structure of our table to find out missing values in the uh, in this ANOVA table all right now as we know that our regression is simple regression and we are going to estimate this line look at it this is equal to now y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x plus error term it has two parameters beta naught and beta 1 so it means that number of parameter is equal to 2 number of parameter estimate is equal to 2 and we know that this degree of freedom is k minus 1 so clearly it will be 2 minus 1 and this is equal to 1 so you can put this value in this table question mark 1 is equal to 1 so we are done with the first missing value now turn to the second missing value the second missing value is we know from this table that it is always equal to sample size less number of parameter estimates since we know that we have collected data from 42 students we can see this is the number of students is equal to 42 and the number of parameter estimates is equal to 2 only so n minus k is equal to n is equal to 42 and number of parameter estimate is equal to 2 so this is equal to 40 so we are done with the second missing value and this is equal to 40 right and now we need to find out the third missing value which is equal to the sum of these two this is equal to 41 so we are also done with the uh, third missing value now we need the next missing value now we need question mark 4 look at its formula its formula is given over here we see that this is this is regression sum of square or explained variation and if we divide the explained variation by its degree of freedom we get mean square error for regression so it means that if we divide this by this it means that if we divide question mark 4 by 1 we get this value so look at it question mark 4 by its own degree of freedom this is equal to 28.7 so if multiply both side by 1 this is multiplied by 1 1 is cancel out with 1 and question mark 4 is equal to question mark 4 is equal to how much this is equal to 28.7 so this is equal to question mark 4 is equal to 28.7 so we are done with this now we need the value of question mark 5 so we need question mark 5 and from the table you can see that 
if you divide summation e square by its own degree of freedom you get the uh, mean square error for residual and where is question mark 5 this is the mean square error for residual so you mean that if we divide 137.3 by 40 we must get this value so this is equal to question mark uh, 5 this is equal to if we divide 137.35 by its degree of freedom which is equal to 40 so this is equal to 3.4 so question mark 5 is 3.4 now we need the last question mark the last missing value and we, we know that if we divide the regression sum up square, the, the regression means sum up square by the uh, residual means sum up square, we get question mark 6. So clearly question mark 6, this is equal to question mark 6 is equal to 28.7. Divide by 3.4. This is from over here. You can see if you divide the regression mean square error by the residual mean square error, you get the F calculated value. So this is equal to 8.44. So this is 8.44. So we are done with the last missing value as well. This is equal to. 8.4 yeah 8.4 so we are done with the first part now turn to the second point the second point is test for alpha is equal to 5% level of significance where the overall model is statistically significant or not so in the in the second part we need to compare the f calculated value with the f table value for part second you need this is part b critical value critical value at f alpha with k minus 1 and n minus k degree of freedom and this is equal to f 0 0.05 k minus 1 is 1 and n minus k is 40 degree of freedom look at it this is k minus 1 and n minus k degree of freedom 1 and 40 degree of freedom in table this value is new 1 and this value is new 2 so if we look into the table of 5 percent level of significant its value is all right 5 percent table new 1 is equal to 1 and new 2 is equal to 40 so this is the f table this is the F table for 5% level of significance because you can see this is a 5% level of significance. This is new one. New one should be selected from over here. This is new one row, right? And this is new one, new two column. So new one is equal to one and new two is equal to 40. So where is the value 40? 40 is 4.08. So this is your table value, which is equal to 4.08. So this is value is 4.08, 4.08, all right. So if we sketch the shape of F distribution because ANOVA follows F distribution, this is the shape of the F distribution and its critical value is 4.08. 0, 8 and this is the critical region and this is acceptance region now your calculated value is equal to 8.44 as you can see from our 8.4 8.4 is greater than 4.08 it falls in rejection region 8.4 falls in rejection region so we reject H naught we reject H naught Null hypothesis for F distribution is beta i hat is equal to 0 and H1 for ANOVA is beta i hat 
is not equal to 0. Rejection of the null hypothesis means that yes, the stomatal parameters are statistically significant or we can say that yes, the overall model is statistically significant. So, this is the second part. Now, turn to the last part. The last part is calculate coefficient of determination R square. Coefficient of determination or R square can be calculated by uh, taking total variation, total variation in dependent variable is always equal to explained variations plus unexplained variations. And all these variations are um, already there in the in our table. For example, look at it. This is explained variation, this is unexplained variation, and this is total variations. So, the sum of explained and unexplained variation is equal to total variation. Total variation is equal to small y square. Explained variation are equal to small y hat square. Unexplained variations are summation e square. If you divide both sides by summation y square, summation y total variation, dividing both sides by total variation, this is equal to explain variation divided by total variation plus unexplained variations divided by total variations. This side is equal to 1, 1 is equal to this is equal to r square and this is plus summation e square divided by total variation. What is this? This is the percentage of unexplained variation. If you shift it to the uh, left hand side, 1 minus summation e square divided by total variation, this is equal to r square. So, all these things are given there in, the, in our table. r square is equal to 1 minus This is equal to 28.7 divided by 195, sorry 137.3 divided by 195, 137.3 divided by 195. You overall if you calculate it, it is equal to this is equal to 1 minus 0.7 or this is equal to 0 0.30. So, R square is equal to 0 0.30. What is its interpretation? It shows the percentage of explained variations among total variation in marks, right? So, it means that 30 percent of the variation in marks occurs due to study hours of the students. The rest of the 70 percent variation in marks of the students are due to unknown factors. So, this is the interpretation of the R square. Thank you. Thanks for watching.